Hey, it's Hot 97, Laura Stiles here. I am so proud to introduce someone who's really special and I feel in today's interview we're gonna learn so much about the art world and everything he does. Introducing Gordy St. Fleur. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I started collecting when I was about 14. Uh, okay, wait, I'm gonna stop you right there because I'm very interested on what is it about art that a 14 year old was so drawn to that made you say like, hey, let me stop right here and start collecting these beautiful pieces. No, I was always interested in with the mind, with, okay. with creative people, right? I always felt that artists are, are born in this universe and are spirit capture. They capture society as we pass by it every day. And they were the people that's put into this earth to be capturing these moments. Yeah. And archive these moments to our history. Now, what is your background? Where's your family from? Uh, my family are Haitian. Okay. Um, I left Haiti uh, a, a while back. Um, most of my family lives in France. Um, and I grew up here in New York. Uh, I, I grew up downtown, Bronx, Brooklyn. I used to ride my bike from Brooklyn to the Bronx uh, to go to the skate park, wow. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> that was right by the Yankee Stadium. So. Uh, I lost both my parents, but that would drive me to become who I am today. So one thing is that me and you were laughing behind the scenes is that um, about you entering the art world, but growing up, you having a, a family who might not understand the art world as a right. career, right? We laughed because, you know, our parents were probably like, uh-uh, you have no, to be a doctor be a doctor or yeah. a lawyer. lawyer. Yep. <laughs> how did you, uh, first of all, I just want to say, how did you make this passion into a career? For college, I applied to a two-year program to help me understand the fine art business. Mm -hmm. And when it's my first job was working for an artist as a studio manager to really understand the engagement, the artists in the gallery, right? Right, right, right. To help know how that relationship worked. And then after that, I worked for an auction house. Um, after working for the auction house, I felt that I was ready to create a whole new audience. Because you know, the art world is, uh, it's very complicated. It could be very intimidating. Yeah, it's a very elitist space. Yes. Um, it's a very elitist space. Art is a very private, secretive business. It's not, you know, it's not a public, you know, it's not your everyday thing. It's being at the right place at the right time. So the most important thing in the art is, is, is really building relationship. Without the artist, there's no art world, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really engaging with the artist. It started off by supporting the artist first. And the artists remember that, and the artists remember that you are there early on, and helping people engage to introduce the artist work to a new audience as well. Do you remember the first piece that you purchased that not only had, and then it was important to you, obviously, because I, I, if you're like me, we only buy pieces that mean something to you, right? Yeah. But that had some sort of value that you were like, this is something that's going to be special. Yeah, my, my first piece actually I bought was from a um, artist from Romania. I think he's from he was from somewhere in the Middle East, or he was a New York City self art artist. He used to be outside making these uh, small works about aliens that's from outer space. He had a dream. It was just weird <laughs> paintings, right? Yeah. But it was something that was the colors were vibrant. It was something very unique about them. His painting just keep on, like, he's repeating the same painting over. At, he had a dream when he was like 14. And he never changes his, his style of working. And he's always going back to that space when he was 14 and he makes the works. And I find that was fascinating. That was right. unique. Right, right, right. Because that memory stuck with him for that long. And I, I, I bought one. He did it back to, I think I bought it, it was like three days before my birthday. And he did it. Uh, and then, there was a relationship that was built from there. And funny enough, um, and he passed away, and um, there was an interesting article in the New York Times about him, about okay. him being this, he was in New York making these weird paintings, right? And there was a professor um, from Oregon State, I think from Oregon University, that reached out to me and said, I, I heard you have some of these works. And he, this guy's like, I'm working on a book. Wow. I'm working on a book, um, and I'm, I'm working on a book, and would you be able to, well, I would love to see the works that you own. And, and, I, felt like, and I was like, man, it, it's amazing. He, this guy was making work, never knew one day someone was going to archive these images, make a book. And I was so happy that, you know, someone 
seen what I see. Right. Someone like, right, 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 you know, right. was, now they're doing a whole book on them. Yeah, so it's incredible. Which is so wild because like with a lot of these artists, right? Like you fall in love with some of these pieces, these like, uh, this expression and the way, like you said, like the fascination of watching them like take a certain moment that truly, truly like pierced their soul to be able to pour it into a canvas or whatever your medium, your is. medium is. But to find out that after they pass is when they truly start finding out that he was so, he or she was right. so appreciated. It's bittersweet. You were gracious enough to let us come into your um, studio. Call this a studio. <laughs> your space. space well, office space, to yeah. your space where right. you have incredible pieces, some of the most beautiful pieces I've seen. Can you tell us a little bit about this piece that we are um, in front of? Oh, this artist is uh, Kaloki. He's from Kenya. Um, and his whole way of making work, he paints on the floor, right? So he, as you can see, the canvas is really beat up, yeah, right? Because he started from the floor, so everything, you, you can see a piece of like, this one part here, you can see a piece of the can, like the, the paint can on top of it. And he started woven, right? So this is raw canvas, raw materials, right? So he's doing a photo transfer as well. So this photo transfer is already prepped before the whole piece will put it together. And after that, he just step on it, and I, he paints on it, and he does the material about life. Being in Kenya, the, the marketplace, there's yeah. this, this images of of everyday people, right? It's funny because his work, you will always discover something. Like you discover, uh, 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 there's a piece of paint right here. Right, right, right. This, you could, right this is a piece block. that you could stare at it for hours, for hours. and, yeah, and yeah. find a new something new. And it's interesting when you flip it, when you flip it over, right? Uh -huh. it's, you can find things in there too. <laughs> so uh, there's uh, some sort of mystery, discovering mystery about uh, different things in his pieces, yeah. For the audience, because I just think it's so cool for our youth to see how you took your passion and you turned it into a career. Right. So just tell us a little bit about what you do with professional athletes when they are interested in the art world. Yeah, so uh, I have a business that focuses a lot on professional athletes, entertainers, and regular regular folks as well so my, my job my everyday job is to make decision yeah so my i have I have a small team that we work with and my team and have to bring me data right and have to be aware of what's happening internationally not just in the u.s so because i'm buying works from all over the globe right i'm buying stuff from asia from the middle east i'm buying works from the continent, I'm buying works everywhere. So I have my clients, so I know some of my clients, what they like. So my job is to build my client's portfolio, right? Usually my clients are buying art and then we, they're transferring the art under a trust. So my job is, okay, how we look at photography, how can we put photography in the collection, paintings, sculptures, uh, new media, digital art as well. So we figure out, okay, how are we gonna build this collection? What are the galleries? Galleries are sending me offers. Mm -hmm. Artists are sending me offers. Auction houses are sending me offers. And my job is to narrow it down for my clients and figure out which clients is gonna take this one, it's gonna take that one. Okay, what is the rarest piece that you've ever come across? Like maybe that, or, or that's mm. a, a very recognizable artist that our audience might know. Wow, um, I come across some really rare Basquiat piece. Oh, like, wow. uh, in, um, and then this is, which is a very interesting market because there's so many fakes out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but this was uh, from a, a very prominent family and their families, uh, they old, they're getting old, but they have this one unique piece that never been seen before in the public. The piece was with the family for a while. And it went to this next generation, next generation for like, my parents had this. And my parents, they always stay in this one place in the house, right? So, and that, and the, and the kids were like, no, we're not, we're not gonna move it. If someone wants to see it, they have to come to our home to see it. Wow. And being able to be in that place to see this one rare piece, it was just incredible. Yeah, I remember, I think about, I wanna say like maybe two year, no, two years ago, or three years ago, I had gone to a, uh, I think it was at the, at the Met. I saw it was, a, it was a Basquiat exhibit. There was like never before seen pieces, right? 
and it was so interesting. Just when you think that you've seen everything online and, oh, and yeah. you see them, oh my God, that's just the tip of it. That's the tip of it. What people allow you to see. Well, so, yeah, because some uh, artists could have give a friend a piece. Yes. We were just talking about you. That yeah, you, yeah. you have a piece that's gifted. That, no, yes. And the world haven't seen that, right? Yes, and then, yes, yes. And if one day you decide a world to see it, and people are like, well, I never, right. you, it's a different body of work. Right. Because there's an early work that was gifted to you, which is it's very personal, right? Oh, man, but it was so cool so, to see. It, yeah. was a, it was a lot of um, protest pieces of, of Basquiat um, just speaking on police brutality. Right. And he had a friend oh, yeah. who was murdered by police. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. And it was also uh, pieces from Keith Haring. They were all kind of in the same oh, wow, click, right. you know what I mean? And it was even a, a, um, a fundraiser where Madonna was performing to raise oh, wow. money oh, for, to raise funds for it. And all these pieces were at the museum. I was mind blown and, and sad too because, you know, it's history repeating itself it over and over and over again. And then Madonna did it, Basquiat. And yes, now, the and connection, now, and you the know connection. what I mean? It was just like, yeah. it was so cool to just witness and see. And I was just like, whoa, I, just when you thought you've seen it all, you forget. Oh, no, no, because there's, there's people that never show the collection or never engage with audience with their with their art. Which, you know, everyone have, some people are for the public and some yeah. people are just like, just collect for their private life, yeah. No, Gaudi, I think it's just so cool that um, you're sharing your story with our audience because it's important for people to see like how you can take your passion and, and right. make it a career. Oh, yeah. And hopefully it inspires some of our, our, uh, our, our viewers. I, yeah, I, ho I hope so. It's, uh, it's a beautiful journey because you're constantly learning, discovering new things about the world, about human, about artists, about just... And art could tell you a bit about the past and what the future is heading as well.